Hi girls, and welcome back to another virtual troop meeting. Today we will be completing step three of your Brownie Home Scientist Badge. Now, if you missed step two, don't worry, you can find it in the Girl Scouts of Southwest Texas video library. Now, before we get started, comment down below with your name, your troop number, and where you're watching from. My name is Rachel Vara, and I am the STEM Program and Curriculum Coordinator for Girl Scouts of Southwest Texas. Now, like we do with our in-person meetings, we are going to be doing the pledge and the promise to start off our meeting. So let's all start with our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great job, girls. Now let's do our promise. And I've got our Girl Scout promise right here. So it's in English and in Spanish. You may do the promise in whichever language you feel comfortable doing um, or no. I'm gonna do mine up here in English. So let's all get ready. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country to help people at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law. We will be exploring density today. Now, has anyone heard of density before? Um, if you haven't heard of density, I'll tell you all about it. So, density, the big definition is the amount of space an object takes up, or its volume, in relation to that object's mass. And now mass is similar to weight, but they are not the same thing. So, some examples of density for you are, let's compare a brick and a pillow. So a brick is much smaller, it has a smaller volume. The space that it takes up in the world is much smaller than that of a pillow, which is a lot bigger. Now, you might be thinking, well, bricks are way heavier, right? <laughs> so bricks are going to be heavier, they're denser, so their mass is much higher than that of the pillow. So even though the pillow is bigger and it takes up more space, the pillow weighs less, its mass is less. So the brick is denser than the pillow, even though their sizes are very different. So the smaller one is actually more denser, it's thicker, it's gonna be heavier than that of the pillow. So what we're gonna do in the next two experiments is see density in action and, and learn to change the density of liquids. So let's get started. For this first experiment, the supplies you will need are a clear glass of some kind, salt, a spoon, water, um, a tablespoon or a measuring device, and then one egg. So girls, when we think about density, we're gonna try and do this first experiment. I want you to take some of your water and pour it into your clear glass. You fill it up all the way, all the way. Ta -da. Now, our glass is filled with water. So what do you think, we're gonna come up with a hypothesis, okay? So what do you think is gonna happen when we place our egg into the glass of water. Is the egg going to float? Is it gonna to float to the top? Is it gonna to float to the middle? Is it gonna completely sink? What do you think? Now, this one is just a regular egg. It's not hard boiled or anything. Um, so what we're, now that you have your guesses, if you write them down in the comments below or write them on a paper at home, now we're gonna drop our egg in very gently as to not crack it. And then, oh! So that happened very quickly. If you can see, my egg has now sunk to the bottom. So <laughs> it didn't float, it didn't slowly take its way, it went straight down. So right now, what does that mean? It means that the egg is denser than the water. It won't float because it's denser. It has a higher, um, its volume, in relation to its mass is much higher than that of the water. So it's 
gonna sink. Now, let's see. We're gonna change one part of the experiment and see if that does anything. So what I want you to do is pour your water back out into your measuring cup, your other cup. You don't need to use a measuring um, a measuring cup like I am. Whatever supplies you ha have at home will work perfectly fine. Just something with a spout so it doesn't get too messy. So what we're gonna do now is pour, we're gonna take our salt and we're gonna do about four tablespoons of salt. So you just eyeball this so one, two, three, four. Now that is a lot of salt. And now we're going to pour our water back in and we're gonna fill it up like three-fourths of the way. Okay, and then take your spoon and you're gonna stir, stir, stir. We want all of that salt to dissolve into your water. So stir, stir, stir. And what do you notice already? What do you notice, huh? The color of the water has changed. Let's see, I think for the most part, now if you have any trouble, like your salt won't dissolve at all, you can always heat up your water. So you can put it in the microwave, uh, put it on the stove for a few minutes. You don't want, you don't need boiling water, just warm water kind of helps the salt crystals dissolve faster. So, da, 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 da. we can kind of see our salt is spinning around in there. Now we have what's called super saturated the water, meaning it's full of salt, okay? Now what do you think's gonna happen when we drop the egg into the salt water? Do you think the egg is going to sink to the bottom? Is it going to float on the top of the water or is it going to float in the middle? Like it'll go in, it'll sink a little, but not all the way. So whatever you think is gonna happen, comment down below. And the same thing we did the first time, we're gonna drop our egg in and see what happens. Look! <laughs> so, what are, what's happening to your eggs at home? So my egg here is floating on the surface. It's much higher off, you can see. It's very, very different than our previous egg. And what all we had to do was change the density of the water. So now, with all that salt in the water, the egg is, is now less dense than the water, so it's gonna float on there. Now, um, in the world, there's this really cool sea, it's called the Dead Sea, and this type of experiment just happens. If you ever go visit the Dead Sea, um, it's so salty that you can float. Now you might say, well, Rachel, we can float in pools in chlorine or in the regular sea, but you have to keep, you have to hold yourself up, okay? So if you weren't trying to keep yourself floating, you would start to sink because we're denser than that water. Now in the Dead Sea, it is so salty that you can just lay on your back and put your arms over, cross your feet, and you float. So we would all be like this little egg in the Dead Sea just floating around, and that's actually where it gets its name, the Dead Sea, because it's so salty. Um, but, so now we learned, we got to see density in action with our egg and our salt water. So let's clean up, I'm gonna clean up my space, you clean up at home, and then we'll get ready for experiment two. So I'll see you in just a sec once everything's cleaned up. So it'll almost, almost what I have to do is just snap my fingers. We are back and ready to start experiment number two, where we're going to be making a rainbow in a glass. So we're gonna learn how to change the density of water to make a nice, pretty rainbow. So the things you're gonna need are food coloring, a spoon, 
a tablespoon, a measuring cup, your clear glass from experiment one, and then three additional cups or glasses, and then granulated sugar. So what we wanna do is take our first cup and we're gonna pour about one fourth a cup of warm water. So this water, I don't know if you can see the steam happening. Um, you wanna make sure you have warm water for this experiment. So I just put my water in the microwave and I nuked it for about a minute and that's giving it the proper uh, warmth because we want all our sugar to be dissolved. That's the only way the experiment's gonna work. So we make sure we're gonna pour one fourth of a cup in there. Okay, and we're gonna take our three other cups and do the same thing. So just pour a fourth of a cup in each one. Now, each one of these is going to be our colors of the rainbow. So I unfortunately don't have your typical colors of food coloring at home. I have this uh, very tropical version. So uh, my bottom color, we're gonna go darkest to light. So the bottom layer is gonna be starting at our clear glass and we're gonna go up. So it's gonna be darkest to lightest. And the same thing, it's gonna be densest to least dense, okay? so. The bottom one is gonna be our darker color and it's gonna have more sugar. So we're gonna take our purple, or if you have blue, this is where you'll do your blue. Do one or two drops in there. And then because this is our bottom most layer, we are gonna put in four tablespoons of sugar. One, two, three, four. And we're gonna stir, stir, stir. and see if the heat of the water will melt. We're gonna move on to our next color. So for me, it's gonna be green. I'm gonna do, and for you, it will also be green. I've got one, two. And depending on how dark or light you want your colors, you can do less. I'm just doing two drops of each of my food colorings in, um, but you can do as many or um, as less as you want. If you want it to be nice and pastel, only do about one. Um, so for our next color, so we had four in here, we're gonna do three in here, okay? So one, two, three. And then we're gonna stir that one up. Stir, stir, stir. Now, at any point, if you have trouble getting your sugar to dissolve, just reheat that water. So you can get it really, really hot so that sugar all melts down. You really don't want any sugar crystals remaining in any of our um, layers. So stir, stir, stir. I think that one's pretty much dissolved. Sit it over here. Now my next color is going to be pink, or if you have red at home, use red. So one, two. And then for this one, we're going to only do one tablespoon. Okay, so it's four, three, one. So I'm making it a bigger difference instead of just doing two. So just do one tablespoon. Stir, stir, stir. So it's 
nice and dissolved. It doesn't sound like there's any more granules in there, so we'll move on to our last color, which is gonna be yellow. For me, it's orange. Um, but you can also do orange at home if you want. So we don't need our colors anymore. And we're not putting any sugar in this one. This one's just going to be plain water. We're just going to stir, stir, stir. Until it's nice and covered. So just do, once you have all of your sugar dispersed, just do a quick stir to make sure everything is dissolved. And if you have any bits of sugar, just reheat that water, okay? So keep doing this. We're gonna stir, 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 and then we'll start layering in just a second. Okay, girls, so I thoroughly stirred all of my cups. I even had to nuke my purple layer because I couldn't get those sugar granules to unfortunately uh, dissolve. So don't worry if you had to do that too. It just happens. We want to make sure that they're all dissolved before we start. Now I cleaned off my area and I've got my spoon again. And then also if you have a straw of some kind, this might also be helpful. Or if you have a turkey baster at home, which is kind of like a giant pipette, um, that can help when we try to create our layers. Because what you want to do is be very careful. We're not just going to pour the whole cup in there. Our layers will start to mix. So what I'm gonna do is spoon some of my blue layer, or my, oh sorry, my green layer into my glass. So, I'm gonna put it on the side and see what happens. And then just keep going. Be really careful, this is gonna take a while, girls, because we gotta get the whole cup in there. So basically I'm taking my spoon and putting it up to the side of the glass and then just tipping it in and letting it slide down the side so that it doesn't mix. Okay. And then we're going to just keep doing this until our blue run or our, sorry, excuse me, our green runs out. I'm using teal so it looks it's got a blue hue to it. going to take as long you know it's not a quick experiment don't try to rush it girls a little messy okay so I just finished my blue now on mine or my green it's hard to see because of how dark the colors are um, so I might have to put it in the light for you to see because right now it just looks like it's all mixed together so let's continue on and let's try our red or my pink layer and we're gonna add it just like we added the other one where we spooned along the side, okay? So remember this one had one tablespoon.
hopefully your layers are coming together a little bit better than mine. So let me do our last layer, which is orange or yellow. And see where this one was just plain water. We didn't have anything else in it. I'm gonna try my straw method and see, just use my thumb to kind of. And this is just regular water. Okay, so I finished all my colors. And let's hold it up and see. So from where I'm sitting, it doesn't really look very different. But you know what? I'm gonna put it in the sunlight and see if we can tell our layers that way. So I don't know if you can tell, but down here is our purple layer. Our green layer gets a little lost. And then in the sun, you can even see our, our pink layer. Let me see if I can get it. Oh, there it is, see? That's the pink layer. And then on top, around the edge here, you can see our orange layer is sitting on top. And then if I get in the light, you can see even more of the pink. So you can really see the orange layer up here just saw what my rainbow looks like outside and though you can't see them as definitively from here it kind of all looks like one color why do you think that is because we followed our science steps we followed our instructions um, we created those different densities is there anything any other element of this that you think could have thrown off our colors now if yours turned out into a beautiful rainbow at home Take a picture, put it in the comments below. I'd love to see it. Um, for me, when I think about it, I think it actually oh, might be my food colorings. Um, I think I may have made them too dark, honestly. Um, and so you kind of get them lost when it comes to like looking at the different sides. Also the gel might, it's a different consistency than the liquid. So that could throw it off as well. Um, maybe it's just too dark but you can see it's really interesting if you noticed as you were adding each of your layers if you look at the cup on the side so if you hold it up for each layer you could see that top line is the color of that layer so as i was adding pink on top of our green i could see it turn color up here I could see it become that pink color. And now when I take it outside and I look it from the side, I can see that, you know, kind of see the, the thin parts of it. Right there at the top, it's orange. So there are layers in there. They're not mixing right now. Now, if I put a spoon in it and stirred it all up, obviously they would mix and become one big sugar um, mixture. But you can kind of see it from the side that definitely our red may have blended with the others, but it is very separate from that purple. So 
And that happens in science, girls, where it doesn't turn out perfect. And that's the interesting and fun part about science is, well, what can I do better next time? What can I change? What are those elements I can change to make the rainbow more prominent? Maybe I want thicker layers. Maybe I need different tools. Um, all of those things can kind of lead to better discoveries. So that's what scientists do every day, is they have that hypothesis, they do the experiment. What happened? You know, did my was my hypothesis wrong? What do I need to do to fix it? So what is the science telling me? So for this one, I think I'd probably try it again with different uh, food coloring or maybe use less and a little bit more water, make those thicker layers and see if I'd get a better look to it. Um, but I hope yours turned out well at home and you have uh, more of a rainbow than I do. Though if you take it outside, it is really cool to look at in the sun. But yeah, I definitely have three, at least three definitive layers. I think the green got a little muddled. <laughs> so, and if you have extra sugar, you could make your layers heavier. So I wanted to use the least amount of sugar possible um, so that you don't use up all your sugar for an experiment if you need it for baking um, at home. But change it up, you know, be a scientist at home like we're doing with our badge, try it out. Maybe use different amounts of sugar, maybe try salt instead of sugar on the experiment. Um, I'd love to hear uh, if you change anything up, tell me down in the comments below if you go off and do another version of this experiment and see if you can make it work. Um, I'd love to hear about it. So I hope you had fun today, girls. Um, and if you liked this video, make sure to like and share it with all your friends. And I'll see you next time.